For the Fort Worth Report, I'm Kayla Holmes. After experiencing a lack of education around mental health, 17-year-old Linda Clayton developed her own mental health curriculum for schools. Doing that earned her the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest honor in the organization. Clayton speaks about the importance of mental health in schools, as well as standing up for what you believe in. Mental health support at my school has been a little bit rocky over the years. It's a one chapter um, health class that you do in seventh grade for a semester. It really is not enough. Telling students that they're worth more than one chapter, than one hour a year, is how you're going to destigmatize mental health. My name is Linda Clayton. I'm 17 years old and I'm a senior at Fort Worth Academy of Fine Arts and I grew up right here in Fort Worth, Texas. I first became aware of my mental health when I was nine years old. I was in a bad situation and I could feel that something wasn't right. I've become more aware of the mental health of my peers as I've gone through school and I realized, oh, this is something that a lot of people go through and something that really does need to be addressed because I thought I was the only one, but I'm really not. The idea of a mental health program had existed in my mind since seventh grade. We need to have more awareness. We need to equip students with more tools to learn how to cope with stressful situations and how to help themselves and give them a toolbox to better their mental health. It was a huge project in my mind and one of the reasons it had been delayed for so many years was because I was so scared to get it started. What if I messed up? What if I got this wrong? My family is very open about mental health. If I'm having a bad day or if I feel that I'm slipping into a series of bad thoughts, then I can go to my family and say, hey, this is what's happening. My dad has just worked wonders with this project. He's done more for it than I ever could have asked, than I ever could have imagined. And um, during the process of making all of the different pamphlets that explain the activities, I also found a lot of support in my friends. They would come over to my house during summer last year and we would write and they would check all my grammar mistakes and they would draw for the pamphlets to make them visually appealing. And of course, my Girl Scout troop leaders were just there the entire time. And they were also very inspirational in showing us that you're never too young, you're never too inexperienced to tell people what you need and what you want. There are a lot of people that struggle with their mental health and there are resources out there. Find what you cling to that's a helpful coping mechanism and stick with it because you are so, so much more valuable than what the voice in your head might say. It is as important as your physical health. It is as important as your spiritual health. It is as important as your emotional health. What I would say to parents teachers, support systems, is listen to your teens, listen to your students. It's better to address something when it comes up than to say, oh, they're overreacting, oh, they're just attention seeking, and then have something terrible happen. The fight for mental health continues as more and more Texans seek help following the pandemic. So how do we fix it? Well, one step may lie in the experiences of a North Texas teenager. Brian Scott shows us how she's trying to help make mental health a focus from a young age. Well, no doubt when young Texans get to the highest levels of the Scouts, they tend to take on some very real world issues as their final projects. Well, that includes this one taking on an issue that hits very close home for not only the Scout, but a lot of people out there. The American flag patch is just kind of standard. But the rest of Linda Clayton's sash reads like the book of her decade through Girl Scouts. Membership pin, membership patch, my 
three awards that I'm most proud of. The book, if that's the book, this is the final paragraph. Wow, this is something that I wish I would have used. Because Linda's big swan song project as a scout is something she wrote from a very personal place. I have struggled with my mental health before. I think I first started realizing it at the age of nine. Yeah, just nine. I was like, something doesn't feel right here, and I need to go and find help. Luckily, she was able to, but not everyone is, especially so young where even a serious issue may just be written off as a phase. So why not give them the resources? An idea that became this. Broken up into a bunch of different prevention factors. Linda dedicated years of experience and her gold star project to creating a suicide prevention program for schools. It's taught through a series of different activities. Simple stuff. Mental health buddies. Write someone a thank you note. Things educators can just mold into the everyday. Proactive steps rather than just reacting when a kid's in crisis like she was. You've done a great job. Now the project's blown away her Fort Worth scout leaders like Becky Burton. She's just, she's got it. After all, the Girl Scout CEO says even their organization is finding mental health has to be in the conversation these days. It's not taboo. You, can, you don't have to hide and talk. you can talk about it and be, you know, no matter who you are, all walks of life it's it's affecting and and linda hopes with her curriculum that'll be even more true for the next generation i could look back on what i went through and i acknowledge that that was incredibly difficult for me to get through but look at what came out of it the final chapter of her scout story hopefully a new beginning for so many others Scouts can earn many badges and awards during their journey, but there's one award that surpasses them all. It is the Gold Award. Many try, but very few actually earn this award. We call Linda Clayton one of the lucky ones, or one of the hardworking ones. This year, her program, Not One More, earned her the coveted award. She's here to share her story and how she wants her program to help prevent youth suicide. Hello, Linda. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Okay, we have been chatting up a storm behind the scenes here. I'm so excited to introduce you to people at home. Not one more. Yes. Tell people, what is this movement, this work? This movement, really, its goal is to get a constant conversation around mental health, especially for teens. And I made up this program with that idea in mind, and I added kind of supplementary activities. Mm -hmm that support different prevention factors that I looked up that help teen mental health and preventing suicide in the long run. So Linda, what was the inspiration for this work? Because this is not an easy subject to talk about or address. What was your inspiration? My inspiration, it's been going on for a couple of years before I even started the program, but there was one catalyst moment in which I came home from a funeral for my brother's friend who had actually succumbed to suicide. And I said, it's not a matter of if I'm going to do it, it's how I'm going to do it. Mm, okay, so this leads me to our next portion of the conversation. I loved this. Linda said she was talking to adults, to teachers, to people in positions of power, saying, I want to make these changes. They would say, yes, that sounds great. But it was essentially lip service because nothing was happening. So I said to you, how do you go from lip service to actually achieving follow through? What's your answer? You find the people that will support you. You find the people that will support you. Who is that person and then what happened? I love that advice. That person was the counselor at my school. I gave her a 10 minute presentation. She actually didn't have any involvement in the program before I gave her this presentation. And she took it and she's been doing it for like pretty much a year now. What would you say to that teacher? Or what would you say to an adult when a young person comes to them with a dream and something to do? Because that one teacher, that one counselor, that was a game changer for you. What would you that say was. to her? I would say thank you. Thank you for yeah. listening to us. And adults, listen to your teens. Okay, because you would not stop, because you got from lip service to actual follow through, what is happening at your school now? Currently, there is a constant conversation around mental health. There's activities in our morning assemblies. There's an advisory period, which is we take 30, 45 minutes on a Monday to learn a mental health uh, strategy, something that will help us. So we're, we're identifying a problem and then we're presenting solutions. Um, you know, I think the younger generation, this is a 
a strength that they have, the ability to talk about mental health, the ability to talk about that. For older generations, I think that's more difficult. Why is it important that we talk about these things in an open and honest way? It's a universal experience. Yes. I know, especially when you're going through it, it can feel so isolating and you can feel so alone. But at, there comes a point where you have to realize everyone at some point has felt that way. Mm -hmm. And people, this is a tragedy that mm -hmm. suicide happens at all. Yeah. And if we can save anybody to, and have them realize their potential and their worth as a human, it should be a conversation that happens. And it's a conversation that's happening because this young woman would not give up. Tell folks, where can they find more information? You've created a website. There's actually teachers at different schools that are looking at this, telling you that these are great resources. What are we looking at the screen right here? This is my website, EliminateSuicide.com. On it, you can find all the materials for the program, including the implementation packet, which is really what Not One More is. It is this is a constant conversation around mental health and here are some ideas for you. Along with that, there are uh, packets that, like I said earlier, have prevention factors that they address and they address them through easy to in incorporate activities that you can use at youth groups or in schools and classes. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Last question for me. Your dad's here. He's filming behind the scenes <laughs> right now. You must have come from a good family. I've got a feeling. What's the best piece of advice your dad ever gave you? Don't borrow grief from the future. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Say it one more time. Don't borrow grief from the future. Okay, I'm stitching that on a pillow. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you, Dad. That is so beautiful. Jane, come on. So good.